Welcome back everyone for part two of lecture five. And so now what we're gonna do is talk about how to approach solving these material balances with reactions. And there are three different options with regards to solving these material balances. So there's a molecular balance, an atomic balance, and a extent of reaction balance. So for this part two, we're gonna talk about a molecular balance. And then when we get to part three, we'll talk about that atomic and extent of reaction balance to help you out with working with reactions in our systems. So in order to talk about this molecular balance, we're gonna use a practice problem. So in this case, what I have is a, I have a reaction chamber where I have methane reacting with oxygen to pr pr produce carbon dioxide and water. Now I have an inlet stream with methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and an exit stream with those three, or methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, as well as water. Okay, and so I've given some information about that first stream. I give you a, a molar flow rate. I give you the mole fractions for each of the components. And now you're challenged with figuring out what's in stream two and how much. And so I'm gonna give you a couple of other pieces of information. So I'll tell you that the fractional conversion of methane is 0.9, and that we're operating at steady state. And again, the, our goal right now for this problem is to determine the molar flow rate and the co composition of stream two. Now, the first way that we can approach it is something called a molecular balance. Now, when performing a molecular balance, we're gonna focus on each of our molecular species. So you can pick any one that you like, just like our material balances, you pick one species and you focus on it. So for now, we'll focus on our, we'll, do, we'll focus on methane and do a methane balance. And when doing this balance, we now are gonna go back to our general material balance equation, where we have input minus output plus generation minus consumption equals accumulation. And as always, we're going to try and simplify it as much as possible. So in this case, as, I, as we saw in the problem statement, this is operating at steady state. So that means to us, we can get rid of accumulation. All right, that's convenient. We also know that in this reactor, we are not generating any methane in this process at all. So we can get rid of the generation term. But because we have a reactor that's combusting methane, we are gonna keep that cons consumption term. So now if we rearrange everything, we're gonna see that our input is equal to our output plus consumption. And now we can start substituting in some of the variables that we're familiar with into this material balance equation. So we know, we know how to express the input. We got the mole composition of methane multiplied by the molar flow rate of methane in stream one, or the, mol, the total molar flow rate of stream one. We know how to define the outlet flow rate in terms of methane. And the last term is consumption. All right, and so for our consumption, big question is, well, how do we determine consumption? And in this case, we can use something called the fractional conversion. Now, as a reminder from part one, our fractional conversion for methane is gonna be the amount converted or consumed divided by the amount at start. So for us, we're gonna say that it's uh, the moles of methane consumed divided by and not for methane. So in this case, I have the moles of methane consumed is gonna equal our fractional conversion of methane times the initial amount of methane. So if we go back to our material balance equation, we're gonna now substitute in that consumption term. And so we have fractional conversion of methane times the initial um, molar amount of methane. And so for us, remember that that initial molar amount is going to equal the mole com molar composition of methane in stream one times the molar flow rate of stream one. And now we can substitute in all the known variables we have. And so uh, we can substitute in all those known, known variables. And then after we do the substitution, we can see that we have 20 equals the molar flow rate of methane in stream two plus 18. And after rearranging, we'll see that the amount of methane flowing out in stream two is two moles per hour. Great. And just as a, a reminder, a complement to this piece of information is that we have consumed 18 moles per hour of methane. And we may need that later, which is why I'm mentioning we have consumed 18 moles per hour of methane. All right, so now if we return back to 
our original diagram, we now have one more piece of information. We know how much methane is coming out in stream two. Great. And now what we're going to do is just continue those molecular balances on the other components in our system. So next, we're going to approach the carbon dioxide balance. And again, we're going to try and simplify our general material balance equation. So in this case, we know that accumulation, again, is going to be zero because we're at steady state. We know that we're not consuming any carbon dioxide. And we are generating carbon dioxide, so that, that is the extent of our simplification. So we know that if we rearrange, that our carbon dioxide is going to be, the carbon dioxide balance will be input plus generation equals output. And again, we're going to substitute in our known variables. So we've got the molar composition of carbon dioxide in stream one times the molar flow rate of stream one, plus the molar flow rate of carbon dioxide being generated. I'm just leaving that term a little ambiguous right now so we can figure that out later. And we know that that's going to all equal the molar flow rate of carbon dioxide in stream two. So now what we're going to do is substitute in some values. So we can substitute in everything we knew for stream one with regards to the molar composition of carbon dioxide and the molar flow rate. And then this is where that 18 moles of methane being consumed is coming into play because I know I used up 18 moles of methane and now I also can use a conversion factor. I can convert how much methane I used up to how much carbon dioxide I was generating. And in this case, we are generating one mole of methane, for, or sorry, one mole of carbon dioxide for every mole of methane we consume. And so we can now use that conversion factor to get the number of moles of carbon dioxide generated. And now, after we perform all these mathematical calculations, we get 20 plus 18 equals our molar flow rate of CO2 in stream two. And so we have 38 moles per hour exiting our reactor of carbon dioxide. Okay, and now we're gonna move on. We'll do another molecular balance. In this case, we're gonna do it for water. So again, we're gonna go back to our general material balance equation and work with, the, uh, try and simplify this equation. So again, accumulation is going to zero because it's steady state. And this time around, we also have no input of water because that's not in the inlet stream. We also know that we're not consuming water in this process. We're just generating it. So for us, this time around, our general material balance will boil down to generation equals output. And now again, we're going to substitute in some variables to help us out. So we've got the we've got a molar flow rate of met, of water that's being generated. It's going to equal the molar flow rate of water exiting in stream two. And just like on our carbon dioxide molecular balance, we're also going to use that piece of information that we used up 18 moles of methane, we consumed 18 moles of methane, and we generated some stuff. And we can use that and our conversion factor for the amount of water we generate per moles of methane consumed. So in this case, we're using two moles of water generated divided by one mole of methane consumed to figure out how much water we have. And so when you perform this calculation, we figure out that we've generated 36 moles per hour of water. And that's how much is exiting in stream two. All right. And now, last but not least, we've got an oxygen balance. And in this case, again, we're going to simplify this general material balance equation. We know that accumulation is going to equal zero because we're at steady state. Our generation is also going to be zero because we're not making any oxygen. And that's all we can do to simplify. So now we're going to rearrange. And we know that input is going to equal output plus consumption. We then can substitute in our values. So we've got 0.6 times 100 for our input. It's going to equal the moles of oxygen exiting in stream two plus the amount of oxygen we're consuming. And in that case, we're going to, again going to use our methane conversion factor, where we have moles of methane consumed multiplied by that conversion factor for the amount of moles of oxygen needed per mole of methane consumed. And after rearranging everything, we'll see that we got the 60 minus 36 equals our oxygen left over. And in this case, we have 24 moles per hour of oxygen exiting in stream two. And now, if we revisit our general di our process flow diagram, we have now sub we can substitute in all our known values for stream two, 
and we have all those molar flow rates, and we can therefore also calculate our molar compositions, which I'm not gonna do here. If you are very curious, you can calculate that yourself. And you see here now that we've actually been able to figure out all of our unknowns, which is really exciting. And now just to highlight again, we, we've been able to use molecular material balances to solve this reaction problem. And now in part three of lecture five, we're gonna talk about the other two options you have for solving these reaction material balances. So stay tuned and I'll see you very, very soon for part three.